Good morning to you as you are coming on. There is so much to discuss and to deal with this morning, but I just want you to bear with me. But at the same time, I want to get you through to this quickly. I just got back into the office, but I think I need to put this through to you straight away. I just got into the office. But I like you to have information at hand. I really, really do. Good morning to you and thank you for coming on one by one good morning to you and thank you for coming on good morning to you dear good morning to you good morning I want to talk about the problem facing parents bringing children for settlement into the United Kingdom. I'm very blessed. Thank you. Thank you. It was good. Thank you. Thank you. There are so many issues that parents that are settled in the UK are currently facing in terms of bringing in their child or children that they left behind into the United Kingdom. The right of appeal is extremely tight at the moment, even though Article 8 right is there. The right of appeal is currently tight. So they, even though they will give you right of appeal, but the chance of success at the, at the court is, is quite slim if those documents were not available at the time the application was made to the entry clearance officer anywhere outside the European country. So I am generally dealing with cases coming out of Europe. I'm talking about cases coming out of Europe. Good morning to you, everybody. Good morning. Currently, I'm talking about cases coming out of Europe. Please call our office to book appointment 0208-309-8808. 0208-309-8808. Phone office and book your appointment to see me. That is the only best way forward to resolve matters at hand. You know, there is little I can deal with online when I have thousands of questions coming in through my inbox. I cannot deal with them at one go. So I would rather love to encourage people to go in and book appointments on 0208 309 book appointment on 0208 you definitely need appointment there is no way you can do this without appointment so i would advise so you definitely need appointment on 0208 a lot of people want to get free advice without taking necessary uh, consultation before they get their application to the entry clearance officer outside the United Kingdom or outside the European country. There is no way application of that type will succeed. They are complex, they are complicated. 
so they are not straightforward. If you are a person that is present and settled in the United Kingdom, and I think I have said this so many times, but I realize that it, it's important again for me to reiterate at this particular junction so that people will understand, you know, the essence of taking advice. And when you are taking advice, I'm not saying you should take advice from somebody who doesn't know what they are doing. I'm telling you to take advice directly from my office so that I can be bound that, yes, the advice is from Tukumbo Lagbaye. She said this, she said that. I stand by my words and I don't change it. If you have been in the United Kingdom for many years and you left your child behind, there has to be some documents to prove that you have responsibility on that child. And I realize that a lot of people want to adopt or bring in a child that is not theirs into the United Kingdom for purpose of settlement. Say, for example, they can, some people are telling me that they are their sister's, late sister's child or late brother's child, and they have been responsible for the upbringing of that child. So they now want to bring that child close to them because they are fed up of sending money into the wrong pockets over there. That is fine. You can do that. But a child that is not directly yours has to be properly done in a way that you have to adopt that child. So adoption process is the applicable route to take in a situation when you want to take a child that is not your biological one. You need to adopt that child for the purpose of legalizing everything. If you don't legalize, you're not going to succeed because you will be lying under hood that the child is yours. And when a DNA is required, you will not pass it because definitely a child that is not yours will not show 99.999% of DNA result as your child unless if it's forged. And there is no way it can be forged because the government will use its own hospital that you have to attend for the, for the bowels. So we need to get things right clearly. Now, situation have changed in terms of adoption processing. So you will need to go through the social services in the United Kingdom and, and be authorized that you are fit, you are well and fit for the purpose of adoption to be able to adopt that child that you have in mind. It is a conviction that adoption process must go through certain requirements. So any adoption processing after 1st of June 2003 has to pass through some channels before it can be acceptable in the eyes of the law. And after when, it is after, before you do the adoption over there, the authorization has to be taken from the United Kingdom, especially those who are from Lagos, Nigeria, rather. So the convention requires you to take steps from United Kingdom, start your processing from there before you now move smoothly into the um, organization that want to release that child or to the family that you're taking the child from and go through court processing. So you will now need a local lawyer that is familiar with the adoption process in Nigeria. So that has to go through court. I just know how quick it can be, but you definitely will have to pass through that area first. Now for a child that is born, biological child, to the parent that actually settled in the UK, if it's a parent and not parents, it will be difficult. If it's a parent and not parents, it's going to be difficult. So you will need to demonstrate that you have that responsibility over your child. And when we, so, when we say responsibility, you might not be the one that, is take, staying, that the child is staying with because of your overseas settlement. So you have, you have you know, taken someone to actually take care you have, you have chosen someone to be taking care of your child on your behalf. So you delegate. We call it delegate. 
So the responsibility is still lies with you. So you are the one making that decision. So you are making decision for that person on how to take care of your child. Now the protocol is that you must be able to show on a daily basis. It's not something that you want to show occasionally or once a while that you have responsibility and you are doing this, you are doing that. No. You've got to show in debt that you have day to day responsibility. There are so many things that people don't take into account when it comes to showing responsibility in looking after a child that is overseas. But the crucial part of it, the crucial part of it is that you must demonstrate that you have daily uh, responsibility on a child that you have left behind. Now, a typical scenario that a lot of people don't really count serious. It's a situation when a situation when you have left your home country for let's say over 15 years and that child was a year old when you left that child. Of course the child is now 16 years, isn't it? From the time you left that child at the home country, you need to demonstrate what you have been doing in the life of that child before the present day of application. You need to show the reason why the application is just now and not before. You have to show the reason why that application is just being made now and not before. So many times I try to put it to the parents' attention what is expected of them. But the arena of court is different entirely. The arena is different. What the judges are looking for, it's a complete ball game entirely. So scenario when you were granted right of appeal, Believe me or not, the chance of your success is quite slim if you fail to put in necessary documentation at the time of your application. The issue of sole responsibility has to lie with you, not someone else. It has to be with you and not with someone else. And in the event that you cannot demonstrate that you have that overall control, that application is not going to succeed. So at all before you submit an application, I would suggest that you take proper advice. Don't say you have read something online. Because the, the small print that we see as a lawyer, you can't see it online. It's not going to be written out there. So you need to take advice when it comes to putting in an application for your child to join you in the UK. The law is saying that in order for you as a sponsored parent in the UK to succeed on that application, you need to show so responsibly for the child. It doesn't matter whether they live in another country. You have to show that you have been so far, as, as far as possible, they at arm length exercising the normal role exercising the normal role played by a caring parent now if you are a genuine parent a genuine mother a genuine father of course you should know everything happening in the life of your child even if they are married you should still want to know some things not to now talk of when they are still younger and they are living with someone else and you don't call, make a phone call until the end of the month when you get your salary, you get your pay back. That's not responsibility. That's not parenting. 
So in another entire entire uh, in another way of looking at it entirely, the rule is saying that you need to demonstrate that sole responsibility of being a caring parent, not just because you want to get the child in to come and start assisting you to look after the child that you have bought, you you gave birth to with another man here, and then you now want that child to come and be your guardian mommy in England, and that's why you want to bring the child into the UK. The judges are really aware of this problem, and they're not happy. They are fully aware of this problem, so they're not happy. So you really need to be on the edge of it when it comes to making an application. Now, if you want to agree with me, the gap of 15 years is a long gap between you and that child that you have left behind. A year old, the child left behind. The child is now 16. That is 15 years gap. When did you actually obtain your settlement status? That is another point. When? Because you really need to show when you were granted. And you have to show the reason why that child has not been in the UK unite with you since you came to United Kingdom. The court says that it is accepted that the child's day-to-day -day care is delegated to another person in the child's person's own country. But evidence that you have ultimate control rests with you and is required. Evidence that you have the ultimate control rests with you and is required. So if you want to show that you are a caring parent, there is always a way to go about it. And that's what the, the law wants, not something else that you want. The rule says the day to day, you know, responsibility can't be delegated, can't be moved to someone else, but you must have the ultimate control. You must have the ultimate control. Control. There, are, there are some things in the guidance according to the rules on the immigration and nationality laws section 5a is saying that there are things that you need to put in place the other parent is live and active in the home country, you're not going to succeed. How about when I make effort to see my children and my ex keep hiding, hiding from me? Um, are you in the United Kingdom? You know? Are you in the United Kingdom? You just have to take, you have to take through the court channel and get the order from court. So that you can have contact order, share responsibility, section 8 order. So you need to do that. You need to have share responsibility. So don't let anyone tell you that something cannot be done. Under the emblem of law, a lot can be done. A lot can be, can be, can be addressed. You know, a lot can be addressed under the emblem of law. But you must not do it in, an, in a way that it will jeopardize your chance at all. We make you become a criminal in the United Kingdom. Do not make anything difficult for yourself. So you need to go through the proper law. If you want to see me in the office on that matter, you can book appointment on 0208-309-8808. If you want to see me in the office on that particular matter you mentioned, then you need to book appointment on 0208 three zero nine double eight zero eight if you are a responsible parent and you've not done anything stupid under outside law then you should be entitled to have contact with your child at the end of the day it's going to be sheer responsibility between two of you you see you can leave your husband you can leave your wife but when the moment you have child in relationship there can never be clean break under section 25a of the family 
Matrimonial Causes Act, there can never be clean break. So you really, really, really need to understand what you're doing. You really, really, really need to know what you want. And you cannot just want to turn up one day to say you want to see a child that you have not been responsible for the upbringing, that you have not been imparting it to her life for many years, and you just want to turn up one day just because you want to obtain your status through that child. That kind of system will not work. So you need to impart your child's life from day one. So even if you and the mother or the father are not together anymore, because it can be either way, that does not mean it's the fi final of everything. All you need is to do the reproach and redress and lament the errors and then get along again with your child. You know, if you leave a wife, does not mean you leave a child. If a wife divorces you, does not mean that you should lose contact of, for your, of your child. So if you're a responsible man or a responsible woman, you shouldn't leave, lose contact. There is an incident yesterday that the man has a section 8 order, so he has overall control. So there are men that have overall control as a result of their women's nonsense movement in the country. Infidelity, out of, out of uncare attitude. They lose control over child, so the responsibility is placed back to the man. There are many of them like that. And the only way you can get share responsibility is to show that you are a responsible mother or you are a responsible father. Then the contact can be shared. But you cannot have it straight away. They will only ask you to be, to be visiting or to meet that child up at a certain place, you know, but you cannot have the overall control if you have messed up from the beginning. Now, go back to what I'm talking about with issue of settlement. A child wants to come in for the purpose of settlement. If it's both, if both parents, if there are both parents in the United Kingdom, of which both of them are present and settled in the UK, and that child res uh, um, responsibility is put through to someone that is taking care of that child, that application should be relatively straightforward. It should be relatively straightforward. If both parents are in the United Kingdom and they are settled. Now, most cases that I am having problem with, these are cases of situation when one parent is here. The other one we are about is either known or unknown but the authority would like to know the whereabouts of the other one so on that part a of the immigration rules the paragraph 296 to that paragraph is saying that the parents that are settled in the uk must show their responsibility and it must be exclusive to others so you must have the control total control if both parents are here it's fine all you have to demonstrate is that you now settled you cannot have time to travel you want to have your child with you or the person that is taking care of your child is no more available or the child is not properly being treated or the child needs to move on something to just demonstrate that application we will get it we will get it through we will take it through the one we normally have headache with are the ones that the either the dad is here, the children are in Nigeria, we are asking about the mom, the dad is not telling us the truth about where the mom is, saying that the mom is not with the child anymore, the mom has gone elsewhere to remarry, the child is staying with someone else in the house, or the children are staying in, their, in his house on, on their own. A uh, legal brother is just going there, for fraternity brother goes there to go and check them, things of that nature. That application remains so, so, so slim to succeed. Above all is when DNA is missing. So when you want to take application in for settlement purpose, I will employ you first and foremost to think about the issue of DNA. You need to do paternity test. If you don't do that test, DNA, to confirm that you are the parent of those children that you want to bring into the United Kingdom, you're not going to succeed. How are processing into the United Kingdom is different from the United States. 
Hours is different. It's difficult. It's strict. It's really stringent. The stringent rules that we apply is different from the United States. So it's not comparable. If you have traveled everywhere and you want to take visa to the United Kingdom, your application is more likely to go smoothly. But if you have a passport that is clean and you, only, and you only travel to U.S., that doesn't guarantee you that you will be able to enter United Kingdom. It does not guarantee you that you will be able to enter United Kingdom. So that is one aside. Carry on with this issue of children coming to settle with parents in the U.K. I am particular about it because of what I saw this morning in the arena, you know. So, the child that's coming to UK has to be under 18. The child coming must be under 18. It mustn't be over 18. Any child that is over 18, you got to really demonstrate that that child is not living independent life. Independent life. Independent life. You have to demonstrate. If you cannot demonstrate that the child is not living an independent life, the application is not going to succeed. But the, most, the bottom line is that there, is, there must be DNA in place. If there's no DNA, you're not going to go far. Call me right now on 07908-628-240 if you have inquiries to, to, to make now. Call me on 07908-07908-628-240 for inquiries now. You know, for all inquiries. So this is the time you can just call me to inquire about what you can do in that respect. You know. 0790862240. That's the number you have to call me on. Can I have the office mobile, please? Thank you. So I'm on 07908-628240. You can call me if you want to make an inquiry regarding any problem you have on your immigration matter as well. This is just your chance. For all those that have sent me loads of uh, inbox, I can only answer them through here now. Hello? Hello? Can you lower your, can you turn down the volume of your Facebook? Turn your volume down. Okay. All right, thank you. Go on quickly. Good morning to you. Okay. So how many of them do you want to bring to the United Kingdom? Regardless of the... Well, regardless of how many do you want to bring to UK, like I said first in the program when I first started now today, adoption process has to start from the United Kingdom. So you need to take details of that child, documentation, and take it to the social services. In the, in the UK, yes, okay. and let them go through the assessment with you first so that you don't waste money with the Nigerian advice that you're going to get on grassroots. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, so you, you, you need to, you need to take it through to, uh, with the social services first, let them advise you. Okay, and okay. then you, and then you take it on from there. Then if you need my advice on the documentation and other things, then you book appointment to come and see me. Okay, Yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. Sorry, okay.
For settlement. Yes. Yeah, if she's destitute, of course she can go through the waiver. Okay. okay. Yeah. And what I will do is I will book an appointment. Me and her will come and see you at the office. No problem. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank All right, you very much, Okay, take care. Bye. Bye. Yeah, bye. Hello? Hello? Good morning to you. Thank you. God bless you. He can get he, he can get the same leave had his daughter is having, but he needs he needs to he needs to say that again. Um yes because you he needs to show maintenance that is maintaining his daughter, and you need to give him a support letter to say that he's a good dad to his to his daughter. I think you should. I think you should because it's more complex. Okay. Okay. I'll give you the number. You'll call me. Okay, dear. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. All right, dear. Yeah, bye. Bye. Hello? Yeah, hi. Good morning. Good morning to you. Yes. Am I alive? You are alive, yes. Want to help who, who with the paper? Yeah, if the dad is in the UK, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, of course he can if he's willing to do so. Yeah, of course. Uh, do you have your own paper? So I, I, either of you can get it done. It's your son as well. It's your child, isn't it? Yeah, either of you can get it done. That shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm thinking because I have this uh, two years stay. Okay. So I don't, I, I don't know. Should I? The two years stay, won't be able to give him the right passport. I'm thinking. The, the dad will give him if he's that. If that is the situation, the dad will give him right passport. So don't worry. Okay. Yeah. So the dad, if dad is willing, let the dad proceed with the application. Okay. And if he need, if he need my help, tell him to contact me. Mm. All right, yeah, take care. Bye. Yeah, bye. Hello? Hello? Hi there. Hello? Yeah, good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you very well. 
You are on live, yes. Okay. I don't know why they are doing that. I have a case that I have done successfully around February or so. I think it's it still remain um, with the, the OPO. It's still with the OPO, which is the Home Office Presenting Officer. They are supposed to be they are supposed to be responsible for all successful cases from court. But sometimes they just play up. Maybe it depends on the case background. It depends on that client's background with them. Sometimes when they are not happy with the client's background and the judge overrules the decision, they are, they, there is no way they can overrule judge decision. Then the only way they do it is that sometimes they keep it. They delay it unnecessarily. If it has been allowed, it's that of judge hand. Unless they, are, they are, unless they have missed out that the Home Office has gone back to appeal against the decision. No, no, hear me out. Um, what thing, the, the reason why I'm calling is that, that really, I'm really confused that I was telling her, I said that because the judge has favored them and he, has, he, he even said in the determination the decision that they, they should return the 420 to them. You know, each person would pay 140 that they should return the Home Office the money back to them and home of you have returned the money back to them last month but up to now they've not had anything is the court that returned the money not home office really yes court refund court fee is the court that took money not home office home office took money on the application when we made it at initial stage mm. so is the court that refunds money to them is the home office that's supposed to make decision? So is there a lawyer in between? I suppose there's there's there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's supposed to be one. It's not a good sign. If it's if it's allowed, it's allowed. And if 14 days has elapsed, then it needs to be pushed. And now, so it's supposed to be pushed now. The 14 days has gone. They cannot fold hands. Tell lawyer to write to the home office presenting officer unit that came to court on that case. They should look at the address at the bottom of the case and tell that lawyer to write to the presenting officer that attended that case that day. The address of the home office presenting unit is at the bottom of the notice of hearing. So you tell that lawyer to write a letter to the home office presenting officer asking for status to be granted. I'm not different from them. I'm not different from them. I go to court as well. Oh, okay. Yes, so there's no difference. So if, if any of them attended, they should write. The person that holds the case is the case for, is the file, is the practice. So the practice that instructed that lawyer, that whoever attended on their behalf, just the way they instruct me sometimes, I attend on behalf of other firms, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you are fully fledged in, in cases, they can instruct you anytime to attend on their behalf. But the practice have the overall ultimate control. So the practice needs to tell that, uh, the practice needs to write to the home office, not barrister, not the person that attend. Is the office. That office needs to write. The office owns the file. Okay? So it's not the barrister or the solicitor that will write. It's the, it's the main applicant. I mean, the main applicant. Tell, tell the practice, madam, tell the practice to write to the home office for an update. That's it. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Like I was telling you about the issue of children of settled uh, parents coming to the United Kingdom. Let's carry on, but if you want to make a phone call, we're on 07908 628 
that is the telephone number to reach us on in this arena now. The children, the child that you want to bring to UK, like I said earlier on before I had the phone calls, you need to demonstrate the ultimate control. The situation will be different when both parents are present and settled or they are being admitted for settlement in the UK. If they are coming for settlement, the case will be different. The situation becomes difficult when one parent is settled and the other one is not that second one the third one when one parent is settled and the other one is coming for settlement is being admitted for settlement then that is fine again that is fine again now the situation we are having the most problem on all the time is when one parent is present and settled in the uk or being admitted on the same occasion for settlement and the other parent and the other parent here is dead. In fact, that one is straightforward. When other parent is dead, all you have to do is to demonstrate that he or she is no more and show death certificate. And show documentation that these children are just staying from one place to another. They need to unite with the settled parent in the UK. That one should be okay, relatively straightforward. That one should be relatively straightforward. The one that is not relatively straightforward, the one that is not relatively straightforward is the one that the other party is active. Imagine a situation where a child is at boarding school in Nigeria, for example. A child that is in boarding school is doing well. It's not hungry because the child is in boarding school. That is the thinking of the entry clearance officer at that particular time. And you want to pull that child from his or comfortable education and bring it into the British legal system anyhow. Especially when the other parent is very active in his life. The other parent is doing very well. It's got business, it's okay. But you are trying to bring that child into the UK for the purpose of settlement. And as a result, you want to pull the child carelessly. There is tendency that the application will not succeed. There is every possibility that the application will not succeed. We're on 07908-628240. So if you want to call and ask questions, you can call. 07908-628240. I have time constraint. So I'll be leaving in another 20 minutes. I have time constraint this morning. But I just want to deal with this problem that I found very common now. So that's why I want to take I want to deal with it. So when it comes to showing evidence, you have to show the arrangements that were made for that child before you migrated to the United Kingdom. You need to show the arrangements you have put in place for that child, for the care of that child before you move into the United Kingdom. And it has to be shown up to date. There are so many things you have to demonstrate, but I haven't got time to show it here. You need to demonstrate who that child's day-to-day -day responsibility has been entrusted with. You need to demonstrate who that child's day-to-day responsibility has been entrusted with. And the control of the child since, since you move, who is being in charge since you move to United Kingdom. You need to show who provide and in, in what portion the financial support for the child's care and upbringing. So you need to show what portion of the financial portion you provide for that child. So if you, sh if you provide the overall financial um, support, you need to demonstrate maintenance. You need to demonstrate with document how you have been sending money, paying the school fees, the care, the uniform, the bags, the this, the that. You need to demonstrate. If you can't do that, you're not going to go, your application is not going to go far. It's not going to succeed. What about the degree of contact? How many times do you make a call to your child? 
over there. How many times? The degree of contact needs to, to show. Good morning to you. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hey, Carol, I'm on a live chat. Who is this? Are you contributing? Are you asking questions on the live chat? Yeah, I want to, I want to ask questions. Okay. Different to what you are asking. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Just go ahead. You've, you have paid National Health Service surcharge. If you have paid National Health Service surcharge, there's supposed to be a reference number that you need to insert in your application. Yes, I, I give it to them. So what's going on? Did you, did you use a lawyer to do it for you? What did you say? Did you use a lawyer to do it? Yes. Can you not tell that lawyer to deal with the matter? Why do you have to give yourself a dick? Yeah, last year. Yes. If you paid National Health Service surcharge, Home Office will not misquote it. They won't give you wrong thing. I gave them, I gave them the reference number. Are you sure? No, you can't pay three times. So you need to be speaking with your lawyer in this respect. There's no way you can pay National Health Service surcharge three times. It has to be one. You understand? You cannot pay twice or tw thrice. On one application, is one. It's not twice. So you need, you really need to address this matter properly with your lawyer. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Let me quickly reiterate on what the gentleman just mentioned here. It said that he made an application to the Secretary of State. He has paid National Health Service such charge, to which all of you in the UK are aware of. You are aware of what NHS payment is when it comes to making application to the United Kingdom um, office. But apparently, it, it appears that the Secretary of State is saying that the money is not paid, and he said he has paid three times. Now, he used a lawyer in this kind of scenario, so he will need to address it with the lawyer to know exactly where things went wrong. He shouldn't be giving himself a dick. He has paid for the services, so he should enjoy it to the fullest. Hello. Good morning, Good morning to you, dear. Good morning. Thank you. You submitted an application, isn't it? Yeah. Under your partner and your your child. My child, yeah. Mm. And when was this uh, submitted to them? That is the, the you are waiting for the court decision, the tribunal decision, isn't it? No, they are decision. The yeah. tribunal gave them uh, two weeks to go and check if my son uh, is actually a British mm -hmm. and my, my partner is actually a British. Mm -hmm. So they went and checked and yeah. they discovered that they are both British. Mm -hmm. And they wrote me, they said uh, they are convinced that they are both British. Mm -hmm. the lawyer to do that job for you. You shouldn't give yourself a headache. Okay. 
Yeah, lawyer is supposed to push in and said what is going on, and re and, and remind them the judge uh, decision or that particular matter so that they can make decision. But it will favor you anyway, so you don't need to stress yourself. Okay. It will favor you. Yes, I'm just really like concerned about the kind. It's just the five months plus now. They are in a mess. The department is in a mess with backlogs now. So, oh, okay. yeah. So okay. you just have to bear it with them. But then, having said that, tell your lawyer to push for you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah, bye. You. Hello? We are on 07908 628240. 07908 628. 07908 628240. That's the number we are. We're trying to tell to discuss the gaps, you know, that we need to feel when it comes to a child coming to join the parent that settled in the UK. The reason why people are being refused all the time. Because there's so much refusal in that particular area now. That particular application is receiving high volume of refusal, mainly because people fail to follow the procedure. Hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Yeah. Yeah, my question is, let me just ask us your question. I just want to tell you the interesting procedure. One, I've got a mother in Nigeria, I've got a mother in Nigeria that I want to invite her over to the UK for holidays. And uh, I hate that she is busy. Second, and secondly, I've got a daughter. What's it, what about the father of the daughter? As is both of you um so both of you are in the UK, are you living together? Yes, we living together in the same house. For you to be able to bring that child in for settlement, you need to show that you have ultimate responsibility on the child. You know. Mm, so you will need advice. I will not be able to address everything online here because I have other calls coming in. Yeah. No, I can't address it. It's quite lengthy. And on, on, uh, and on your mother issue, your mother is coming for visits, isn't it? Yeah, so you need to come. That one is straightforward for a visit visa, but you need to come for advice as well. There's no way I can alight the, align them on, online. It's quite lengthy. To bring your, yeah, you can bring your daughter into the country because the dad is here, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so of course you can get him in, get her in, but you need to come for advice on it. You just have to come for consultation, madam. Yeah? Yeah. Okay? All right, yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Hello? Hello? You are on live uh, in the program. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning to you. Uh, so ma uh, question to you said this we could uh file related to Portugal today. That's fine. Yes, ma'am. So we need to want to buy you for uh, about eight years now and I have a five year old son. You have what? What do you have? Ma? What you said you have what? Five year old. Five year old. Oh, old child. Okay, old child. Okay, five year old. Have you put in an application before? Have you put in an application previously? Any one have you done anything before? Yeah, you before On what basis did you put it in? On what basis? Uh, it was based on um, asylum fee, So you put you you put in asylum, it was refused. So has anything come up since then? Have you done any other thing?
can you see if you can have an appointment to see me? People come from all over in the from United Kingdom. People come from Scotland, from Derby, from Warwickshire, from everywhere. So if you have time, or I'm heavily pregnant at the moment. Ah. I have some conditions, so maybe travel. Okay. Call my secretary, then she will arrange with you how you can have consultation over the phone with me. Okay. On 0208. Uh, okay, call us so she will make arrangements so that you can have consultation over the phone. And you can email me the previous application that they refuse you on. I want to have a look at it. Okay, mm. It's okay, take care. Thank you. I'm sorry, dear. Take care. Yes, you can have a I'm still talking about the issue of child coming to join settled parent in the UK. So overall responsibility is the ultimate aim of the government in this situation. No child should be taken for slavery. So the overall responsibility as a bona fide parent, you need to demonstrate. Scenario where you cannot demonstrate the overall responsibility, the quality of control that you have put in, you need to show it. If there is no quality of control, that application is not going to succeed. The, bo both parents will be all right if they are here. The situation is when one is limited and one is finally settled, the government will have to decide which one to grant that child on. So the person that will be the sponsor parent has to be the one settled so that that child can come under settlement if it's under 18. The one that will be the sponsor parent has to be the one that settled. So the child will be having leave to enter under settlement. Hello? Hello, I can't Thank you. Thank you. And it's the same father, Lulu Mimi. Yes. Don't you know that they will be querying you on that? You don't know. Because it depends on what you put in at the. Are you, are, you, are you going to be saying that Bon Colo in Elek is here? I'm not talking about Colo in Elek. I'm putting myself in their shoes. This is what you will encounter. And it can affect your application if care is not taken. So you need, so we're not to, anyway, if you need my advice, call my office. Okay. I have four minutes or five minutes to go now. Um, you can call me for a bona fide uh, inquiry before I leave 07908628240. Alternatively, call my office on 0208-309-8808 and take appointment to see me. I'm not a free lawyer. I'm a private lawyer. So I charge consultation, which is a reasonable amount of money, to see me and give you a proper advice, whether it is something you have to do or not. Those who have come to me know the truthfulness in my job. They know who I am. They know what I stand for. I don't mess around with my work. So if you need proper advice, come to office. Come and take detailed advice on one-to-one. -one. You buy clothes. You buy shoes. You do window shopping. You go around. So I insist that you should take consultation before you put in an application. Otherwise, you will mess up what is getting blueprint for you, for yourself, you know. If you don't take advice before you messed up, it's not going to, you know, so you need to take advice. 
that's just the bottom line if you don't take advice and you put in an application you're gonna mess yourself up you know you're gonna mess yourself up you're gonna mess yourself up so you need to take advice hello Good morning to you, dear. Yeah, my name is Matuta. I'm calling from Bedford on behalf of a friend. Um, she came to UK on the current of marriage in 2008. She got her indefinitely in 2010. However, she left her marriage in 2013 due to violence. Now she lives in she lives on benefit mainly because she's a student and she's taking care of two kids. No, no, that's not true. Okay. That's not true. As, as long as she hasn't got criminal um, offense. Because she's still in touch with the baby father. Baby father don't want her to move forward. It doesn't matter. It's now five years on, isn't it? It's five years on now. Yeah, more than that. That she's got the indefinite leave. Yeah, she got it in 2013, right? Yeah, so that's four years now. Oh, 2010, sorry. 2010. Yeah, seven years now. So tell her to pray, to put in application. If she needs advice, she should contact me. Give, give her my number. All right, darling. Thank you so much. God bless you for this wonderful work. Thank you, dear. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, dear. Yeah. Hello? Hello, good morning. Good morning to you. Hi. Can you see me as well on the Facebook? Carol. Just hold on. I want you to start this statement. You are, you are entitled. You have British passport or settlement status, isn't it? No, I have two and a half leave to remain. Two and a half years leave to remain. Which is subject to 10 years. Parent route. Yes. How did you get your. How did you get that. Um, She has a child for you. Sorry? She has a child for you. She has a child for me, so we right. were granted together on the... Her asylum was denied, but she was granted on her... She has a seven years old child who she came into the country with that. So she was granted on that, so we were all granted together then. Of, of course, the British government would deny those ones that, those ones that, are, that want to come from outside. All of it? Yes. They will deny them. Don't you know that? I think you should see me for advice when you are ready. Yeah, I will tell you the reason why the application will not succeed. <laughs> can you? Can you? Yeah, yeah. Call, call my secretary. Exactly. Okay. So that's fine. Call my secretary. Get details from from her. How to get how to get me online for online advice or telephone advice. Yeah, telephone advice. yeah she will give you the information on telephone advice so okay, you can, can get, I get your or on your Facebook? Yes, it's there. Yeah. Or do, I can give it to you now. Zero two zero eight. Yeah, I have got the time, right? Okay, get it on Facebook, it's there. Alright, thank you very much. Okay, dear. Alright. Okay, bye. Bye. We have to be honest with each other. Such application will not succeed. The reason which is known best to me.
and I will discuss with clients when it comes to the office, but it's not going to come to public clear. Um, if you want to call in, you can call in 07908-628-240. 07908-628-240. All those that have sent me an inbox asking questions, this is your chance to ask me questions. I will not have time to go through the inbox one-to-one -one and go through it. Last night, some people know that I was, uh, I was awake at, uh, around 12, 1 o'clock trying to inbox and reply all questions. But it's not every day that I am that strength and full of that agile to do things like that every day so you should be at that with me so the best place is here now to ask questions and that's why i came online straight away after when i finished my arena work so you should ask questions now 07908-628240 if you have anything bothering your mind or your immigration matter this is a chance for you now to ask me questions inbox is not easy to deal with i have to be honest with you good morning to you hi hey carol shout out here Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that is oh, that is submit for me. Ma? Chance is submit for me. Yeah, she fresh application or you know, further documentation. You know, fresh application. With evidence that with evidence that. At the turning, you know. At the turning, you know. To date, this is the official divorce, me. Uh -huh. That's fine. That's fine. The delay is there, so you shouldn't get worried. To have to submit that the evidence wants to submit, just keep praying and put your fingers across. Cross, you know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. God bless you. You're, you're welcome. You too, my dear. Take care. Bye. Bye. I have to go now. Okay. Don't go for shocking your belly. I want to appreciate you. I want to thank you. You're all wonderful. Thank you ever so much. Bless you all. And I'll be back whenever I have information at time. But for those parents that want to bring children into the UK, please take advice first before you do any other thing. Don't go ahead without taking advice. It will not succeed because it's more complex the way you are think than the way you are thinking. It's the complexity of it is high. Children that are in, the, in outside the European country coming for settlement is not straightforward, especially when it's one parent that is settled and the other one is not settled or the other one's whereabouts is unknown or is in Nigeria or elsewhere outside you are doing very well. That application to come for that child is not going to be straightforward. So please take advice on 0208 309 0208 309 Many thanks. Bye for now.